Welcome to the Image Critique Show with Jeff Johnson, Rick Avalos, and their special guest. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good <laughs> evening, everybody. Welcome to our show, the Image Critique Show. Thanks for joining in. I know people keep coming in and out the whole night, so that's cool. Um, this is our, our fun little venture that uh, my good buddy Rick Avalos and I are, are doing, and we're just trying to provide an opportunity for folks to... Uh, learn more about their photographs. So you, as you know, you can submit images and we will softly critique them. I mean, we'll be honest. We don't want to blow smoke. We don't want to hurt your either. So just so you know, um, more people are chiming in. So this is episode number five. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, Rick Avalos, how are you? Good, 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 my friend. How are you, Jeffy? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You're on the road. You're on the road. I am. I'm in beautiful Grand Island, Nebraska. Well, Beautiful Grand Island. Sorry. No. <laughs> a lot of good people in Nebraska. We all yes. have friends there, don't we, Zeddy? Pretty sure. sunset behind you there, Jeff. It's good. Yeah, isn't that nice? That's well, that's yeah. the other side of my hotel room here. So yeah. <laughs> you, you missed uh you missed all the hail we had in Denver today. I, I had hail last night, so uh I didn't miss anything. Very, uh, tell was, me about that. I heard about I just got back into town a couple nights ago myself. But last me. night, uh last night was bad and this afternoon, I guess there was another, oh, another one. Parker, it wasn't bad. We just had pea size for about an hour. Yeah, I mean, it was like yeah, it was long. Yeah. yeah, last night, yeah, last night it was it wasn't big, but it was long. But I heard who was I talking to? Somebody said out on the west side. Um, oh yeah, a, a red rock stuff. Yes. Oh wow. People are red oh. rocks. Lost windshields. Yeah. Um, I heard it was there during was the concert. A... It was during. It was before the concert started, but. Thousands, hundreds of people were there. It was uh, off. Which which concert, Cliffy? Uh, it was someone I've never heard of, which doesn't mean a lot. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was some. I guess it was some English guy. But yeah, I've looked at that I list heard, of concerts. Tom Jones. I don't know anybody that's coming anymore. <laughs> I heard there was a tornado warning um, for Highlands Ranch area this afternoon. There was. Yeah, there was. Wow. wow. Yeah, crazy. Well, it, Bob Zettler. Yeah, dear friend, dear friend of all of us, how's weather up your way in Wisconsin? Ninety, hot and steamy. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. What kind of humidity do you guys have up there? Well, usually, I mean, this time of year we get some pretty high humidity, but not like uh, Mississippi or anything. But it's right, still, right. Uh, we, well, we used to joke the uh, the uh, New Orleans Saints used to come to lacrosse in August uh, for their spring training because it was a lot cooler here. We just thought that was the craziest <laughs> thing we ever heard of because that's the hottest month and the most humid month that we have. So, oh my goodness, my goodness, well, everything yeah. is relative, right? Well, yeah. absolutely. And we all know a dear friend of ours that passed years ago, Buddy Stewart mm -hmm. uh, from Mississippi, and I remember him saying. You know, when he photographed his seniors, his high school seniors, they do the outdoor session and they'd get back in the studio as quick as they could. And he says, you know, you northerners, you uh, I, I never heard him say Yankees. It was all <laughs> northerners. Um, no, whatever you think, we do not get used to the heat and humidity. No. We get ourselves back into the studio. But, uh, well, it's just like we don't get used to that uh, freezing cold either. So Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Bob, I, I think you know this, but I, you know, I grew up in Rockford, Illinois, so I was, you know, not far from you. And I remember photographing weddings for my dad's studio there, and that was back in the day when we'd wear suits to weddings. Yep. And I could, yep. I would take like four dress shirts with me, just because <laughs> I knew I was, you know, shoot all the portraits beforehand, go change shirts, come back. And when I was doing one wedding, I remember it was in August, early August, and we were out in the, at the, one of the clubs, and I had everybody out beautiful lighting beautiful everything and i passed out dropped face first Whoa. on top of my camera and i mean i was trying to drink water but oh man that was that was rough stuff so you know uh i'm going I, to I colorado mentioned, <laughs> i mentioned i just got back uh the family our family was um, in south padre island texas mm -hmm. never been there before but it's so it's very far south and my uh one of my nieces uh asked me months ago uh if i was going to be bringing my camera and i said of course and she said you know it would you mind terribly if uh, we could do some some photographs on the beach and i said of course i'd be happy to and 
what's so we, we stayed at one stayed at one of those VRBO things and uh because there were like 29 of us and uh we fit comfortably in the VRBO, but the humidity and heat took the camera out, and you know what, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, it just totally <laughs> popped up the lens. Um yeah. so I cleaned it. But it was the inner elements, one of the inner elements that was fogging up. And I thought, oh, my gosh. So I took the lens off, held it to the That's sun. That's how you get that soft focus. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> but this, is, this is way beyond Tibor Horvath <laughs> soft focus. And, um, and I was able to, you know, to get a, everything fine. And I thought, oh, my gosh. Because we had two sessions. We had one session in the morning at a water park with all the foliage and then the evening session on the beach. And I thought, well, I'm going to I'll just I had the camera out uh, in my room, my bedroom. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll just pack it up in the case. And by the evening, I should be fine. Phew, didn't work. Walked outside, just w right out the door, just like you're wearing glasses. They fogged up. I thought, shoot. And uh, asked my um, niece about a hairdryer. And so I just was warming the lens with the hairdryer. And that did the trick. Because I should have probably kept the camera out in the back, uh, outside, you know, in the backyard, which was secured, just to uh, acclimate it. But uh, that was quite an experience. Well, if you One keep the temperature inside too cold, as yeah. I, I started warming up the temperature in my camera room some, because... I used to have that trouble all the time. I'd have to set the camera. We're going to go outside and do outdoor part of it. And set it out while they're changing and hope it would right. be up by the time they would. Right, be right, done. right. Only Rick. Yeah. Only one problem with your story. I'm sure you didn't say shoot. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, why don't you introduce our guest for this evening? We can get things. It right. would be quite the honor, uh, my friends. Uh, we've been doing this. Uh, thing for now our fifth episode here so glad to have you all here um just pleased to be working with jeff in this project and cliffy the great engineer that he is um <laughs> our special guest tonight bob we call him zetty zettler uh from wisconsin just a wonderful photographer uh pp of a judge affiliate uh, judge for years and years as a matter of fact, uh, Zeddy, when did you start judging? When was, as, a, as an affiliate juror? Because I know before that you've been judging as well. It's been so long, I can't remember to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably uh, 1986. Oh. Or well, no, no. Oh. Been, after I got my, so Bob, probably 87 or 88. Okay. Wow. Okay. Somewhere in there. Yeah, way before we had to do the whole course like they do now. On Friday. yeah, right. The right. course is phenomenal. Yeah, and you're in the uh, Wisconsin. Whereabouts? Yeah, well, on Alaska, uh, which is you know if you know where La Crosse is, La Crosse is a suburb of on Alaska. We like to say, um, <laughs> but we're really a suburb of of, of La Crosse, um, right on the Mississippi. My place overlooks uh, uh, Lake on Alaska, which is a backed up area of the Mississippi. Which so, which which uh, counts for the humidity that you have there, I would imagine. Probably, yeah. So we're kind of in the uh, southwest. We say we're on the uh, west coast of uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, I was going to say that's the, the left coast of Wisconsin is what I remember. Yeah. yeah. So, Bob, do you remember my dad? He was Tom Johnson in Rockford. He was he was a juror for PPA for many years, 60s, 70s. Um, you know, I. I can't remember names very well at all. So if I saw a picture, I might, but I, hey, so by name, I don't. This with yeah. dark, with dark hair, same face. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So, so Zeddy, when did you, um, when did you get, first get into photography? Well, when I was a, uh, actually my, between my junior and senior year in high school, oh. my yearbook advisor got me a job at a, a studio near our hometown uh, that used to come to our school and do all the pictures and uh, she thought I'd be good at it. I was her yearbook photographer um, and in our small school I was the yearbook photographer. There, there was no backup <laughs> um, but uh, I started working there and I worked in the summer. My senior year I worked half days because I had enough credits to graduate. I didn't have to go to school anymore but I did um, and 
they hired me full time after I graduated, started photographing seniors that summer and weddings and 46 years later, here I am. Well, I was just going to ask you, uh, you know, how many years you've been into it as young as you look that uh, you've got decades into it. Huh? Yeah, it's and it's it's been a, a great trip. I worked for that studio. Actually, it was a big operation for the time. Uh, we had three locations. Uh, five staff photographers. We had our own full color lab, in effect, and a black and white lab, oh. our own art department. And I did uh, my secondary job when I wasn't doing photography was working in the color lab. So it was a great experience for me for when I went out on my own 10 years later and, and you start communicating with the labs and you know, stuff isn't quite right. And you know, it's not right. Yeah. You know yeah. So, so you did your own printing a lot? Back, well, I did all my own comp prints uh, okay. when I worked there. And even after I, I left there, um, I had a friend in Chippewa Falls that had his own lab, and I'd go up there and print my comp prints. And, and now I do them digitally. So, yeah, it, I think I probably, in all the years I've been, I've been entering since 1979. And wow. I bet you uh, I have printed all but maybe six of my own images wow. um, one cool. way or the other. I think Jeff and I are with you on that. Yeah, that's very cool. We both grew up in the dark rooms too, so it's it's so rewarding when you know that. Yeah. But you know, these kids now they say, you know, if they take if they're taking a photography class in school and they're doing black and white film, I'm thinking, okay, that's a good history class. But <laughs> if you want to be a photographer, um, it's good basics, but it's not really going to help you in the in the real world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do yeah, do, you, do you feel that? Uh, printing your own work back in those days helped you as a photographer oh absolutely um, not only the printing but the this the whole idea of the competition i mean i got into it right away because the other photographers that were working there were involved and then i was a print crew at the state association all those years and and in charge of that and and just being involved with behind the scenes and seeing what's all going on and you know it just was a tremendous education i mean i always felt that the uh the print judging was one of the best programs you ever go to at a, a convention you know absolutely education. i totally agree and it's disappointing a lot of times when you don't hear the comments because it flies through with a score and it's like oh well wh why did it get that score and that's why critiques like this i think are yeah bad. and i appreciate that bob because just what you said was what uh, i think was the motivation for jeff and i to uh to get this project off the off the ground because uh, images need to be spoken about and unfortunately right. in competition they're not uh, uh, i mean you know we get some images that are in the uh higher categories and there's a lot of conversation about them um to elevate them to the next level and unfortunately the 77s to 79, 75 to 79s, you know, the ones that we would hope would have conversation just aren't getting it. But uh, this right. is why we have this forum and hopefully it'll be helpful to our uh, our uh, members. Right. I think about the days when you would enter one photograph at two or three different competitions. I mean, I've had images score 91 at one competition and the next panel i didn't do anything different to the print 76 because one judge had something about it that he didn't care for or whatever and then the next time it would go and it would loan or um Im imaging excellence whatever you want to call it these days and it's just it, it blows your mind but it does give you that realm of of what's possible and what people see and i think that helps you kind of hone to what um works well uh, besides your own taste yeah, I mean, I, I had an image one time uh, at uh, Wisconsin that got a really high score. And, uh, you know, oh, everybody's congratulating you. And, oh, that's for sure going to get a court of honor. And, you know, all these awards at the banquet, nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how many how many times have we been at our uh, state or um, uh, regional, as they called them at that point, yeah. uh, scored very, very well? and did nothing at PP of A, and yeah. yet uh, an image that barely got an 80 went long. Uh, yeah. it, that's just the nature of the game. Yeah, that's why you can't give up. I, right, good the point. One year that I, you know, I've always told people too, you know, when, when you can enter four images, 
enter four images. I don't care if you think one is a throwaway one. Who cares? I did that one year and I got four loans. And yeah, I, I, you never I know. An image in there that I didn't expect to do anything, but I wasn't going to send a, a case with only three. Right. right. You know? Right. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times you know you 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 make your four images and you know this one's my favorite. I know this. Yep. That's the lowest scoring of the four. <laughs> oh, every time. Yeah, been there, haven't we, Cliffy? Yep. You aren't kidding. Yeah, well, it's sure. just it's a game, but I I mean I can tell you I know I'm where I am with my knowledge and experience or whatever because of doing this over and over and learning and and picking the you know I always say this to the people that I uh, tutor and such that. I'm one opinion. We're three, four opinions. Um, educated, yes, so on, so on. But you still have to keep in mind that we're just one level, one outlook on on a piece. So we're going to give you the best information that we know for your images, um, and you still have to take them and go run with them from there. And and don't just, you know, don't just because Rick says so. Well, if Rick says it, it's good, but <laughs> <laughs> because I say so doesn't mean it's the gospel. It's my point of view. So right. but all we ask is that keep an open mind and just think about maybe. And the other side of it, too, I think is kind of funny is when you might get one judge. Say, ah, this is too dark. OK, well, OK, one person's opinion. But all of a sudden, if you have four people on a panel out of five and they all say it's too dark, you might want to listen to that. because yeah. There's something there. So. Anyways, well, Bob, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and um, we're going to get started here with some uh, some images. Um, anything else you want to throw out to the crowd before? Oh, guys, you got to go if you haven't go to the image critique show and look at Bob's page and look at his images on there. He gave us about I don't know fifteen or so, and and then go to his site. His uh, his site is studio, yeah, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I should maybe update that once in a while. <laughs> well, shouldn't we all? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Anyway. Once we get started, people should know to use the chat if they have questions, or and I'll, I'll monitor that yeah. and I'll bring it to your attention. So thanks, Cliffy. Good. Very point. cool. All right, so I have, uh, and I've been noticing here. I was telling you guys when we started, Zoom has made some changes, so I'm going to be struggling. I think a little bit here with uh, how to open image. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, unless there's any other comments or any questions anybody has before we start, but I'm going to share. I'm going to steal the screen, and Cliff's going to watch the chat box because I won't be able to see it. So let me take the screen here and oh I still have that open. That's why. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let's go this route. And we're going to start with oh, that started that way. We're going to start with bears, the circle of life. Bob, we'll let you start off and give us an idea of what you oh, think. You're gonna make me start off. <laughs> Jeez. Well, they, Rick they is mad at me. Our right? Honored guest. Yeah, and don't forget that up at the top to hit the annotate, and it'll give you the little pen pencil tool that you can draw circles around if you want, or and to uh, <laughs> make your point. Well, this is a, a kind of a cool image. I mean, it's definitely got a a strong center of any interest you know exactly where you're supposed to be looking um it uh it in my opinion i if i feel like it's a little bit underprinted i mean it's uh there's some beautiful colors going on here but i think it would even richen itself up uh if they it got printed down a little bit deeper and i'd be looking for a a, a matting to go around it uh, for some presentation as well um you know, we always say that the the mats you don't want them to take away from the image they aren't going to gain you a whole lot of points but if you do it wrong you're going to lose points but if you don't have one it doesn't support it either and so it's one of those necessary evils just like a title you know yeah and that is a that is a rule in uh ppa competition you do have to do a some sort of a matting and a key line or something but like bob says make it subtle rick what do you think yeah uh, I, I totally agree I think the composition is handled very, very well. You know, we've got uh, um, you, we've got Yogi the Bear up here in the in the, the <laughs> third. <laughs> you know, in a PowerPoint that is handled very, very well. I don't know. I'm I'm guessing, you know, the color of the salmon. I'm guessing, you know, do you guys feel that it's a little 
saturated or oversaturated? No, no it's not at all. That's that's they look like that. Okay, they seriously, do yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The cohos and the reds, they they seriously have that deep crimson and and uh, pinkish red color to them. So, okay, and that's that's what I appreciate about having a panel like this because uh, you know you can get a um, a nature photographer, uh, landscape photographer, portrait, commercial. Uh, in a, a a landscape photographer, nature uh, photographer can see a commercial shot totally different from one who does it all the time. So I appreciate the the input. Well, I really yeah, the placement like we talked about is awesome, and I just love this whole circular movement coming out through the fish, and yet it brings us back into the bear. Uh, to start over again so it's just really got some awesome movement the color harmony throughout like we talked about the color of the fish even with the green of the water um, and this the guy definitely stands out in this picture so I think this is well done and yeah and, and it's easy we talked about the borders here real quick the uh, the mats we were referring to don't necessarily pick this bright color or even this bright green because then you'll have this obvious neon border around the scene it's got to be subtle it's got to be something that works i mean don't you think something like this maybe even a white mat like a fine art mat would be great for this rick what do you think yeah okay because it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no um i agree you know it'd be more of a neutral uh, tone but let's go back to what zetti was saying in terms of printing down Let's talk about exposure. What do you think about the exposure? Are we on it? Or if we were to print it down, are we going to lose a lot of the, uh, I don't know, you know, in the shadow areas, are we going to block up areas here, around here? Um, exposure-wise, let's, let's yeah. visit about that. Well, for sure, I think the bear and the, the green area right around the bear could use some more density um you know here's where you go into custom printing again instead of just being a straight print yes you want to make sure that you can control some of those things and, and we have even more tools to do that with today than we ever did when we were working in the black or the dark room you know that's for sure so i think there's some pot serious potential here for that good stuff guys let me clear this one and um Let's see. So I can't move along here. Wait, I gotta close this is what I'm finding. All right, we have oh and I don't know the title of this one. Hold on. This one is energetic elegance. So that's what I'm saying is this this tool is not working right here. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, good, really good black and white. Um, nice range from we've got the bright highlight of the sides of the aircraft that are facing up, and it looks like there's just the slightest bit of detail or or shape in the edge of the um let me get my little pen out here. Um just in the shape there of the edge of the aircraft, right along there, the the fuselage. So it gives us not just a blown out white. We've got obviously some black cockpits and things. That's okay, but I love this beautiful tonal range of the gray. And then look at how nice the, <coughs> the, the smoke, the exhaust stands out. And then I think that mat was done well. Bob, what's your thoughts? Yeah, it's a nice crisp image. Um, I mean, it's, this isn't that easy to do. No. Um, I think they should do a reshoot, though, and get that one jet just a little bit farther back so it's not kissing the other one. <laughs> have them do it again. You know? Do you have the number you can give them? Call? Yeah, right. Just call those guys up and say, hey, you were a little too close. Yeah, um, yeah that's got a lot of impact. It's, it's pretty cool. I do like the white mat on this, and I'm one of those guys that really is not a big fan of of the uh the white mats typically but uh i think it really works on it this works, one yeah what you think rick yes um totally agree 
with everything that's been said, um, you know, it's always a good idea, I think, because these images, when we're taking them, boom, 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 boom. Look at another file, another file. Could there be separation between those two jets, uh, as Zeddy pointed out? Another thing is when we're talking about um, images like this, and we've seen them a million times, I like the fact that it was presented in black and white. Uh, yeah. That's a real novel approach. Um, when we talk about images, you know, in formation like this, we're talking about symmetry. And I think that's what uh, what uh, Bob was bringing out, you know, the this airplane kissing the tail of the one in front of it. But also consider, or let's think about, take that out. Um, notice here on the bottom, we have this much distance right here, and then consider distance here. And what I'm talking about is, you know, it's all about symmetry. So maybe centering the image so that we don't, we have equal space top and bottom. I guess I'm going the long way around there, but, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. I got a question for both you guys. Um, now in the day and age with what we can do digitally and not even talking AI, Oh, I, can't, I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> hey, wait, I swore, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on, you know, because, I mean, you, you you could cut this jet out and move it back and take this nose cone and put it on the front of there. And, I mean, obviously you're not going to present that to the judges to say, well, I did this and this and this. But what, what's your guys, I'm just curious, what's your thoughts on that kind of stuff in general? Well, in general, I've always felt that, that you know if you, if something bothers you, and you can fix it, you should probably try and do it. Okay. Uh, you know we're we're presenting images to be judged, not for our clients, and this happens a lot in portraits. You know, some people don't want all this fixed. You know, yeah. um, whether it be complexion or whatever. But when it comes to uh, entering in competition, I've always felt that you want to present as good a product forward as, as you possibly can to try and eliminate all the little things that any judge you might have heard talk about could complain about it. Now yeah. that's always a, a crapshoot because you don't know all the judges and you don't know what they're going to say, but if it's uh, something that somebody points out and you can fix it, but you got to do a good job of it too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thoughts Ricky on that? Yeah. Good point. Well, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a it's a touchy uh, point that we talk about because okay, you can replace or move the nose of the jet. You can take the the um, uh, I'm just getting my tool here. You know, we can take this jet and push it back, move it up. We can take the all of the scene, move it up, like I was saying, so that we have equidistance between the top and the bottom. Yeah, and you could do it in cropping. So certainly those tools are available. And when we talk about image manipulation, you know, what is the purest point of view and what is the artist's point of view, if you want to call it that. But when you look at it, Imaging and photography has been manipulated from day one. Yeah. Uh, Ansel Adams did it in the darkroom. Um, so, you know, it's, I guess it's a personal perspective you know, where, of where you go with it. But, uh, and I agree with Bob, ultimately it's what you put in front of the uh, judges to evaluate. But I do have a question for you guys too. Um, just for the heck of it, what if this whole image rather than being horizontal were flipped up vertically cool. can you do that jeff yeah i think <laughs> let's see if i can get photoshop to take over here oh i can't get to my menu hold on just a sec here this is so frustrating to only work with one little screen here um my zoom menus in the way there we go 
it's a really good point, Rick, because you know, so often you see these images and they're all horizontal. Yes. yes. But again, now you're adding the one little element to make it unique. It doesn't matter what way you photographed it. You know, right. obviously you can't right. flip this one because the letters are there, but there we go. Yeah, this zoom has taken over more than the more of the controls than it ever has. So pardon me for being there you go. How's that? Let me go here. I really like that. That's kind of so cool. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. And it gives, I mean, I love all this room that we have up here. All yes. this area is just really giving it um, the space to go. It almost makes it feel like it's even more of an, uh, an infinite direction. Um, yeah. I like that. I do too. Go ahead and talk. I got somebody trying to get in and they can't figure out how to get in. What are your thoughts, uh, Zeddy, about you know be, being the distance from left to right? Should it should it maybe be a little more? I mean, that's not a hard deal at all. Oh no, that that'd be really easy to do. And and uh, here's the the thing on on a comment like that. It didn't bother me the way it was. So oh. if it got brought up and I was it was being challenged, it wouldn't bother me. However, okay. if it bothers one judge, it, and I mean, so that's an easy fix, and nobody's going to complain if it is equal distance because it's a powerful image. So being centered would make it feel more powerful, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I guess two people trying to get into the program and they're asking me how to do that. <laughs> All right, let's close this guy off here. And let's go for. This one here. This one is called Dance of the Aspen. Bob, what do you think? I think it's beautiful. It's such a creative art piece. And and I mean, you don't even know what it is. I mean, you just, I mean, the, the highlights and the shadows and the, the soft, subtle color tones. And I mean, I, I think it's beautiful. You, what, what are you going to, um, I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about it at no. all. I I too enjoy it. I think it's beautiful. Um, a friend of ours, uh, Kevin Holiday, uh, made a point that, man, just one of those things that uh, an aha moment or, you know, slap you on the forehead thing about the white uh, matting, uh, you know, as far as not stark white, but taking it down about 10% yeah. or whatever. Uh, the, the, this is fine art. This is beautiful. Uh, if I had any concern, it might be the key line just a little broader um, and a pixel or two further away from the image. But I'm really being picky on this because this is fine art. I mean, you see this or could see this in, uh, you know, an office building, doctor's office. I mean, it's just or fine art gallery you what you're thinking the what do you think of that mat the white mat you think that works or is that uh it says uh, fine art to me i beg your pardon it says fine art to me with that oh word. yeah 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 and isn't it interesting that 20 years ago if you had a white uh, mat or an off-white mat in an image in pp of a it was the kiss of death wasn't it Bob? oh, right. oh yeah they get up and slap you in the middle if you're in the audience. They get right. Yeah. Well, the the, the one thing that that um, in this image it doesn't do that, and that's why I think it it works for it. But a lot of times, if you put a stark white mat on a on an image, particularly if it's a black and white, it can make your image look muddy. Sure. Right. It's got this bright glare around it. Right. Or if it's too dark, it makes the image look washed out sometimes i mean so that's just something you've got to be able to to play with and adjust but being able to like you say tone that white down to you know 10 percent or whatever is i mean you can see it on your screen so now it's a whole lot yeah easier that's a this great is, call well, rick this, repeat that repeat that we had a couple people join the group repeat that again about the mat what, what was said there because i think that's hang on we got one more coming in <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just getting everybody chance. Yeah, so go ahead and repeat that if you would. Okay, how far back do you want me to go? Uh, Kevin's point? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I mentioned about Kevin, uh, a friend of ours, and white mats. 
um, you know, they denote fine art work because you see them in galleries so often. But to back off of the white mat about 10, maybe 15%, so it's not stark white, and uh, uh, which doesn't visually blow your mind, you know, when you look at the image, but supports the image. And I made a comment about the key line, maybe a little broader and just a, a pixel or two or three further away from this image. But uh, uh, I also made a comment that. Uh, it's everything's evolving. Uh, 20 years ago, as I mentioned a minute ago, a white mat on an image would have been uh, the kiss yeah. of death, you know, in competition. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, you know, if we back off just a little bit, and then Bob, you had some really good comments as well about this. Yeah, it's just that, you know, it, it, they, they've done a nice job on this one. It doesn't overpower the the image or make it look muddy it's it's right. beautiful now that's not to say that a a real light cream color wouldn't work just as well with this too right. i mean it could warm right. it up a little bit but it's certainly you know not one that's that's harming this image at all yeah well and and you know um a lot of times what i do is i'll have this image on various uh layers and uh, with regard to the mat and I'll maybe make another layer with a different color mat yep. another layer with a different color mat etc as well as the key uh, the keystrokes or key lines and then just click them on and off and just see which like. you know which one of them and then none of them stand out to be the, the, the <laughs> it just confuses you even more right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what I do it's like okay and you walk away and get something to eat yeah, yeah well, I like them all walk away like so and, you and can start so, asking other people their opinions. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's go on here. We have Migration Madness. Wow. <laughs> go, Jeffy. This is just, uh, yeah. I mean, look at the, first of all, the intensity, the, um, the, the, the mad rush here, but yet there's still some flow to this. I mean, look at the lines kind of coming in. Let me get my little my little yeah. pen out here. We got some nice movement here and coming across here and going back here, and then these couple down here are kind of lost. Um, but man, it just really lets you wander through the scene, and it's a great quality um, black and white. Look at the let me clear my lines there. Look at the uh, um, definition. There's highlights everywhere. We've got a little bit of white in the waves, but or the water, but that's normal. Um, but even the little bit of black throughout the animals, uh, the mat, everything I think is handled. The, I love the composition of it. Just I, like, I, I, like I said, the I, only, I agree the only, with you. Yeah, um, the only thing wrong, it doesn't say Jeff Johnson right down here in the corner. Yeah. Be good. <laughs> Sorry, Bob, what were you going to say? <laughs> well, this is just one that, that um, and without say, seeing it, it's hard to say one way or the other because I think it works, the, the mat color. I just wonder if that mat, not black, but if it was 50% darker, might make the image pop even more. Good point. Yeah. I, but without seeing it, it's hard, you know, they maybe yeah. tried it, it doesn't. So, but uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. And this is one of those images where the key line, in my opinion, is expertly placed. Because in my opinion, there are two types of key lines, and we, you know, you guys are going to get bored hearing no, me say this all good. the time. Attached and detached. So this is what I consider detached, uh, a key line that's separated from the image. If that same key line was around the image and that tonal value, we would lose it almost all the way around the, yeah. uh, the image, except for maybe somewhere around here wherever the dark areas are um so i think it was a very good choice of key line value tonal value and placement well that's that's a good point rick and the you know there's a possibility here where the inner uh mat so to speak inside the key line could stay the tone it is and the part outside of the key line could be just a little bit darker and might add more interest too. Right. Bring right. multiple tones to it. Good idea. Right. 
Yeah, very well done. With I love the format of it and the placement. I mean, and look and just like I said, the image quality. I mean, look at the detail mm -hmm. in the hides of these animals. Um, yeah, something's lost the water. I mean, how hard that is. But you got a bright sky. How hard that is. Um, handled well. Does Does any of this stuff back here bother you guys? The um, land back here. No, I no, it it's not to me. It. It, because it uh, it offers a anchor point, if you want to call it that, uh, yeah. you know. So yeah, and not it's more in tone with the uh, the water. I mean, it's it's still a different shade than what our main subject the uh, those yeah animals are. So I think yeah. it, I to think me it's good supporting. Yeah. To me, it's it's more where they're coming from than where they are. Yeah. Yeah, I think if it was all water, we'd kind of be, you'd lose that dimension, that depth to the scene. Right. If yeah. it was all water, you wouldn't know where it was. It could be out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, it, it is that, true. Yeah. Very that's true. my point, Cliffy. Good point. All right. Good job, guys. Let's move along here. Let's see. I got to remember to close this thing here. So we are going to go with riding the storm out. Really interesting. Um, um, well, it's one of those things where you, you got to be in the right spot at the right time. I mean, to get the the so-called God rays, you know, coming in here and then to have the rainbow. Um, I know they, they do happen a lot of times together because the light creates the rainbow and the moisture. But to be able to be there in that spot with both of those happening and then to have this kind of beautiful tones in the earth in front and on the side and then have almost this spotlight feel to bring that out, I think is quite nice. Um, I might not have, I might not have done that yellow key line. Um, it's, I know it's color coordinated. I don't mind the mat itself is good color, blends in this neutral and it blends in with the sky. A little bits of blue and it's good. Maybe the color isn't bad, but even at that, we're kind of losing it up here. That's where, like, the last image, um, the detached key line might be better. And then to tone it down, maybe, so it's less, a little less obvious. Rick, what you think? Yeah, I agree. Uh, totally. Uh, I think, again, totally agree with you with the key line color, especially in the bottom left corner where it really pulls my eye down. But, man, just a neat capture, like you said, Right time, uh, right place. Um, very, very, what uh, passive, if you want to call it that, peaceful. Peaceful, yeah. I think in addition to that, and the key line, I think could almost be more of a, a lighter gray tone and detached might be better than trying to pull that that color out. And I know it's nice to sometimes pull the color from the image, but. I think in this case, it's such a different color that it, it's probably not helping it. Right. Um, the two other things that, that um, I mean, I would see is uh, I wish the spot right, you know, is my pen going to do anything? This? I don't no. see it. That could be, I don't think I would tone down the rest of it, but that could be bumped down just a little bit. And I would almost take this and this and not get rid of them, but blend them a little bit too with uh, just to, to tone them down a little bit so that you're not being drawn over here to this one. I love the way this flows through here and with these rays. This one just keeps grabbing my attention. Yeah. Did you see the comment, Jeff, about this image? No. In the chat. Go ahead and read it. I can't I don't have chat open. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh let me get out of this. I got it for you. Yeah, I've been okay. thinking about flipping it horizontally and actually submitting it at as is in as in black and white. What do you think? Flipping it and then doing black and white. Yeah. I I I would not be in favor of that a rainbow should be colored um you know if it were black and white what is that arch coming in from the left having flipped it um 
I, I think it's a beautiful scene. I I just feel that, you know, uh, as far as the key line, which seems to be what we're talking about mostly, is is a concern. What do you guys think? The 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 author of that note said not doing both, either black and white or flipping it, not okay. both. Well, I've I've tried. Um, and hang on, we got somebody else coming in here. Um, I just don't have my tools out here. I was going to take it to black and white, but I can't do it real quick. Um, I've done, I've taken rainbows and black and white, and they, you you lose, you'll lose the blues and the reds and violets. Um, you can kind of bring it up, but it doesn't have a rainbow kick to it. Right. Um, I mean, I think the scene, the the God rays or the Jesus lines, whoever you might be talking to, I just love that. <laughs> um, oh my god! <laughs> in black and white. Well, that was that was a Jeremy thing. In black and white, I think that would be stunning. The ground, the light, everything. But I think you'd lose the rainbow. So if you were going to not have the rainbow in the image, however, you would do it. Would be cool in black and white. How about flipping it, Bob? What do you think about flipping? I don't know. I think if you flipped it, you'd be coming right into. It'd be like you're smacking into the rainbow, and it's almost like stopping you from getting in there. Where I like the the way it is now, where it flows from this the lower left hand corner. You follow that horizon line, and you get over to the rainbow, and it brings you right back into the image. I agree. I agree. We got a really nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I much prefer the other version. Yep. Uh, Me too. Yep. Yeah. Because we're we're led right into the image with that little uh, uh, line from the bottom left, the, the little hill that the line is going into. Uh, you know, a strong uh, focal point with the light, the God rays coming down on the mound. And now, I, in my opinion. I would keep it this uh, version. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. Moving along, we have a bodybuilder. All right, I'll jump in and start. I'll start with this one. Um, really, a, a cool. Uh, I want to say, kind of a modern. Portrait. I mean, I love the different color in the background, a little bit of overlap of the color on, onto him. Um, it's really kind of a nice, um, almost like a butterfly lighting, just a soft shadow under the chin so we can see the musculature nicely. Um, I I do feel like, I mean, I know a lot of times in posing this kind of thing, at least I do this all the time when I'm doing the bodybuilding poses. Oh. <laughs> um, they, they're <laughs> holding their breath to do it, but he kind of looks like he's holding his breath. Um, in minor, but it, it, it looks it makes the expression be a little uncomfortable. Um, the other thing I might say is that we've lost a lot of detail in the uh, black shorts here. Um, not that it's a major part of it, but if there's just a little bit of detail, it wouldn't have these black hole there. Mm -hmm. Rick, what you think? Yeah. Um, my first thought, black and white, um, because we have behind the subject almost half of the image is cool blue right of the subject behind is warm um you know we can which in terms of contrast color contrast is going to draws my attention so let's consider maybe black and white and t oh, there you go you the man <laughs> and then <laughs> and then toning down the black and because see we took we eliminated those contrasty tones in the background uh man to me that just that in itself up to five points for me uh and then taking the whole image you know that you could in uh in uh, nick and play with it to oh yeah <laughs> look at the texture brought out on the this is a little bit yeah. too flat but um yeah. yeah what do you think zay i i agree um with all those comments that definitely black and white is a, a much much stronger image for this i mean i think there's too many competing colors the other way the only other thing that that hasn't been mentioned is that you know, the, the bottoms of his fingers you know the, his hands are, are a lot darker than the rest yeah. Yeah. we're all we're losing detail in his hands in addition to the the shorts Yes, so I don't know if uh, something can be manipulated there or not, but it's got some cool tones. And you're I, right about the expression. That's the one thing that's maybe uh, holding it back a little bit too. But 
definitely go with the black and white in this case. Well, I think, like you said, this area could be just, even in this image, could be lightened up just a little bit, not a lot, just to bring so we're not so dark, because I know it's the light right. hitting the face and the body to show the musculature, but we do have the fingers going into um, a lot of darkness there. But, um, you know, it's the kind of thing I think is very cool, and I would love to see, um, you know, the makers probably go, oh, man, come on, but do it again. Seriously, if you can get in and just take these little tidbits and right. and uh, right. shoot it. The other thing, it's funny, when it wasn't color, I didn't notice it, but now it's in black and white. This shadow and light switch on the wall just pull my eye up there unnecessarily. I don't mind the shadow across behind him and the bar or whatever is behind him there, but this guy, it's just small enough that it pulls my attention, but not important enough to, when I get there, it's like, why am I looking here kind of a thing? So I think mm -hmm. I would suggest eliminating that. But the shadows on the back wall, this stuff and this stuff is very cool. Um, this little stuff here, just this guy here, just asking for unnecessary attention, I think. But um, you know that that doesn't bother me as much. Although I think if I was going to do this over again, I'd want that background much darker. Yeah. Yes. So that, that body would just pop right off there. And I don't mean black. No. I like like the wall and i like the textures in the wall and so if the whole thing was toned down back there maybe that light switch wouldn't be as yeah. obvious yeah and you know um maybe opening up a couple stops just to throw that background a little bit uh, softer yeah well you know the thing now is that we can pick backgrounds out and do that stuff darken it soften it and have it separate from the person because i mean the lighting on the guy is phenomenal it is, it's been, the, especially yeah. on his face. I, as I look at his face, man, that that's yeah, <laughs> lighting. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, good job. Let's see. Whoops, I got to get out of there here. Hold on. Do <clears throat> that. Let's see. Whoops, let's not do that. Okay, so now we have, let's see, it's going in the wrong direction here. Whoops, I got everybody in. This is called Home by Dark. Well, I got too much stuff going on here now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Bob, thoughts? Yeah, it's an awesome capture. Wow. Um, I I love the composition, the placement of the you know where the bird is in there, and you've got the. Um, supporting landscape both behind and below and the different color tones in it um i think it's i think it's beautiful um the key line is hardly noticeable on this one that maybe could be just a little bit brighter and but um and, and maybe my on my monitor the mat looks maybe a little redder than what i would like to see i would maybe try and bring it in to be more like the bird but um I love it. I've never seen one this way. You know, it's a, it seems to be a unique capture. Um, yeah. It's placed in the right spot. I mean, it's in the the rule of thirds. I mean, I like it. Yeah. I really can't add a whole lot to that other than uh, what Bob said about the key line, uh, either attached or detached, but more distinct, I guess, is what I'm thinking about. And I think we've yeah, got not a lot, you know, we yeah. don't want to make it pop off there, but right, right, right. Yeah. And it's one of those, I think the issues we have with doing key lines because you've got so much brightness in the image up here that the key line doesn't show, but down here, it's still, we got right. a lot of density dark here and here. So it still shows, but yeah, I think it could be just a tiny bit brighter uh, as well. But I mean, look at this, this whole scene is just to make sure you want to stand here and, call that eagle over to land on your arm there because it's just such a very um enticing kind of a scene scenario yeah. well even look at the lighting on the bird's face you know i mean and it's so sharp i mean you can see his eyeballs yeah yeah um zeddy jeffy let's talk about scale what 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 are your feelings about it well, I mean, uh, the, the bird is obviously very close to the camera, to the photographer, in terms of um, 
I guess, like you said, you saying comparing size with the dunes and the mountains. Right. The right. Yeah. Yeah. The birds just like right here on top of the photographer to, to capture. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think that's okay. very All well. Right. Zeddy? Can I, can I ask? Yeah, I, I guess it, because you, know, you don't know whether, I mean, this could be a composite image. Um, but if you make the bird smaller, then it loses impact. And if you make the bird even bigger yet, well, then does it make it as realistic? I I, I guess I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Yeah. Just can, can, can I ask a question? Oh. Yeah, Cliff has a question. Yeah. The sun, if look at the sand dunes, they're really red. It's really a late sun, but the eagle's white feathers are white. I see a disconnect in the lighting. Yeah, I do. I, I I just see that when you mention that now, you would think that this, especially being white, we'd have a little bit more of a color cast on the highlight side of the. And, and you know, it, it, it's a good point, Cliffy, and I guess maybe indirectly, that's where I was going with the scale thing. I didn't want to talk about uh, composite or whatever. Uh, I I'm guessing that it could be or it couldn't be, but uh, that's kind of the direction I was going. Yeah, I see. I mean, it's a really a dramatic image, but the light on the sand dunes and the light on the clouds at the very top, to me, they don't match. No. Good point. Yeah, good point. Well, see, you're the spoiler on the panel then, Clifford. <laughs> I know. You know. That's what happens when we're when we're judging, you know, you oh you love this image, you love this image, and then somebody points out something like that, and then you go, Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, I've got I think of a lot of situations like that where you just see something in the image, you say, Oh man, that's so cool, and you give it a high score, and then the last guy pops up and goes, What about <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. No, that's why we do a bunch of people. So, no. Cliff, you're gonna say more, or I see the words. No, I just wanted to apologize for that. <laughs> no, no, no need, I mean, to, no need to apologize because this is helpful information. I mean, if this was my image and these points are being made, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I'll make some, I'll make some adjustments. Yeah, and then to the maker. Um, I'm not sure if the maker's sitting in or not, but obviously we're recording it. Just try some different, you know, just a, a color, solid color overlay. And you may even, you don't need more color in the body of the image, but maybe just put it over here and then just, you know, brush it down, drop down the opacity, whatever, and see if it blends a little bit. Because I will say that now I see it, that this is awfully warm coming in. Um, big uh, sun glare, awfully warm on the mountains. Now, I don't mind the sky back there being that color because that's often a distance and that I've seen that happen. But yeah, maybe a little bit of warmth to the bird might be. And then we could all be wrong. So, all right, let's move yeah. along. But to, Bob's, to Bob's point, you know, you're riding high on, on an image and everything is coming together. And then all of a sudden, one of the judges rightfully makes a comment, doggone it. Yeah. Um, I see those uh, lines in the background, which are um, um, striations or, you know. Oh, like banding lines? Banding and oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden your heart just sinks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we're still, I mean, you can have a beautiful image, but it's still got to have the quality level to, you know. Yeah, the technical through. excellence, yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. But on the other hand, um, this is where you want that to happen. If it's, I mean, if it's going to happen, if you've missed it yourself as a maker, this is where you want to have it pointed out because we're not, we're not playing for all the marbles here. This gives you a chance right. to it and, right. and polish right. it up. And because I mean, I was sitting on a panel in Utah, and you know, two or three big names sitting there with me, and this absolutely gorgeous black and white portrait came up of this. It was the, the Daisy Duke character, you know, from the Dukes of Hazard, sitting on this old wooden shack and she was scantily dressed the lighting everything was just fantastic and we all gave it like 97 98 and then as it turned i happened to look down at the bottom and there's somebody had taken big flowers and there was a series of three of them and just basically repeated that pattern of three all the way across it. and it was so obvious and okay we got a challenge i hate, hate to be the bad guy but we all looked at it and said yeah i did follow up on it and find out and i'm not saying this to pat myself on the back by any means 
but it was at that level where they could send it and it did go into the loan collection when they corrected that and did it because it was just such an amazing beautiful portrait but here is this obvious cloning of the flowers yeah. but that's where you know we that's our job is to point that out so that you don't have that top opportunity missed because of those kind of things so right. well, yeah that's why i think we do a, a, an injustice when we let something slide because oh it's just the beautiful composition everything is great there um yeah yes it could be printed better and it could be this better but I, as it is it goes through and then you missed maybe the opportunity for it to get a greater score or a better right. award yeah. because you you didn't do that right we we did have a, a response here it says yes it's my image from page <clears throat> it's my image uh, somebody said the light on the clouds wasn't consistent, but it was one shot, and that's how it was. So, oh. so there you go. The hole with the oh. bird and everything was one shot. So every page, everything was one shot. That's what it says. You know, well, then, that brings then, up a good point, though, um, because you disputed it. It, it puts doubt in the judges' minds, and then they don't know. You yeah. Know, because it's not a category where you can say, well, nothing was done to this. And that's unfortunate, because if it was a, a, a single capture, now it's worth even more points. That's right. But we don't, we don't know that as jurors. Yeah. That's the sad part. Nice job. Yeah. All right. Let's go with In Good Hands. Rick, you want to jump into this nice portrait? Yeah. Yes, I, I really enjoy this uh, image. Um, you know, we talk about uh, formats, and it's refreshing to see images in different formats. Sometimes we have these uh, rectangular images that are, um, you know, horizontal or vertical, but a square just really is something that's refreshing to see. And as I look at the uh, image, in, a, in terms of uh, uh, composition, you know, I see the little guy's face, you know, in a PowerPoint there, uh, obviously supported by the the hands of the of the dad. Uh, great expression of the child. Maybe just a little bit of uh, detail that hopefully we could pull out in the darker areas. But uh, uh, well done, well handled. I'm looking at. Uh, the key line and we've got a really nice view of the key line all the way around lose it just a little bit right about here so maybe detaching it uh, a pixel or two or three uh, might be helpful to it bob what do you think well, i love the composition i love the impact of this image um, i agree with you uh, rick on the you know, the detailers it almost looks like uh, we're I don't know if I can get my pen tool up here again. Oh, well, anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. This area right here, it just seems to have lost everything. And I wish there was a little bit of detail in there. It doesn't have to be a lot. The other thing that was noticeable to me, though, and I don't know if they softened this afterwards or if it was um, photographed that way, but this arm, I wish it was crisper. But that being out. said, I wouldn't knock this thing out of being a a a, a great score. I mean, I yeah. think it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Those are just things that there there again are, are things that okay, if somebody pointed them out before you entered it in the big show, if there's a possibility to fix it, fix it. If not, well, it's it's good the way it is. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. And yeah, you, those are good good comments. And I think we need to maybe consider to uh, the elements i mean you know there's impact there's lighting there's a very nice lighting um on the whole uh image especially on the subject the main subject uh, composition we talked about that storytelling is certainly there yeah. uh yeah. you know it, these other elements that we need to uh, consider in my opinion are there but uh, well done yeah Absolutely well done. All right, let's see what we have here. There's a comment here that I softened it a bit because Dad's freckles on his arm, arm 
seemed a little distracting. Oh, okay. And he's he cut the freckles off. <laughs> you know, use the the uh, the tools to to just take those out of there instead. I that would I think that would bring my score up uh, considerably. All right, so let's see where we are here. We have that. We have those. We are right here at Family Portrait. Oh, come on. Okay, this is where. Hang on. Why I can't get? Oh, I got to close the tool. That's so weird. There we go. Family Portrait. My screen is not big enough at all for all of this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> go jeffy okay um what a first of all what a, a, a great capture timing um to be able to have you know all three of these cats posing if you will uh in in the family portrait um you know nice spacing they have their own individuality yet even just nice placement uh tough time of day with the harsh shadows but yet the weeds uh, handled nicely. There's detail, the shadows, they're a little deep, but not bad. Um, I think this is a tough one because I think what's hard is we get this bright blue sky that doesn't really kind of, I mean, it's there, but it just kind of doesn't fit with the whole scheme of it. I mean, you don't want to do a matte in that color. Um, but I, unfortunately, with the dark matte and, and such, that, that sky just kind of screams at us. What do you guys think about that? stuff yeah, I think it's just the wrong time of the day unfortunately for a you know it to be a strong competition image uh, we've got the horizon line going through the top of that one cat's head yes. um, and he's slouching you know we've got to make him sit up straight <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. and the other one hiding this in the, here, you mean? the slouch yeah, yeah. You know, it's like um but i mean that that's all fun and, and games but I mean, it's a, a great capture with three animals looking like that one looking right back at the camera um i mean it that part's cool i just think that to have the the competition impact it's the wrong time of day unfortunately yeah yeah i can't really add a whole lot to that i i, I appreciate the fact that uh you know we've got a really crisp clean photograph but in in terms of competition i i I would agree with uh, Bob and Jeffy. What about the uh, um, black, and, black and white version there? Well, you know, in my opinion, um, it's going to be tough to uh, make a different version of this image that would that would sail. Um, what do you think, Sadie? Well, I think that that actually is better. And I'm one that typically likes color over. I mean, everything in black and white is cool and color is, is better. But this particular case, because of that blue, I think it does help it. I, I still think that we're not going to get past the fact that it's probably not the right time of day to yeah. Uh, yeah. photograph the subject for a competition is all. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I think it's a, I mean, it's one of those situations where the person was probably on, on a safari tour and they're in the Jeeps driving by and they have this opportunity to shoot when they can and they're there at noon. And while it's a great image, probably would sell in a gift shop or be great in a yeah. book, but you put it into competition and just the things that we're talking about are just going to keep it from probably score average, maybe not merit, maybe not do better. So, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Let's move along here. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is doing a weird thing on me here. We did that. Here we go. Suspended pollination. That's great. <laughs> <clears throat> wow, what a great uh, 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 eye to kept capture this. Um, I, I mean, I can just tell from my own experience, I've tried to capture the bees and the bugs and the flowers, and they just, they don't, they see me coming and they leave. Um, <laughs> But I mean, just even the, the composition is very strong. I like that it didn't capture the whole flower because it lets the bee stand out be our focal point. Um, even the 
um, brilliance of the colors. The mat, I think, was nice. That green goes well. The yellow key line. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. I think it's uh, it's it's good. Um, maybe I'd like to see just a little bit more. Um, let me give him a little pencil here. <clears throat> Detail in the dark shadows here, and I think that could be easily done. Um, just to bring it up, just a little bit more, because you know the dark shadows, the holes, we kind of tend to fall into those those dark holes, and we're looking for something, and there's nothing there. What do you think, Bob? I think it's very cool. I agree with you on the composition and the matting and everything. I think that's uh, handled very well. There's a, a couple of these spots right here, and I know it's natural for the flower, but they draw my attention. And that would be easily fixed with another layer. Take a part of a petal here and just drop it behind there. You'd never know. Um, and it would make that more complete. Um, the, I think the biggest thing that's, that's holding me back a little bit is it doesn't look like the bumblebee and the center of the flower is as crisp as I would like to see that. And th that may be able to be adjusted too. Right. But it's a beautiful, I, li I love the capture. Yeah. Yeah, one well, of the titles suspended pollination that's just very yeah. creative yep and that's that's huge <clears throat> yeah yeah rick any additional thoughts uh yeah uh, <clears throat> i think all the points you made are very valid a beautiful image i do enjoy the composition <clears throat> excuse me i would um, suggest using that same color value of key line but detaching it only for one reason um, we we see it very well along the left bottom and right side but we're losing it on the top and to me that creates uh, a point of distraction uh, key lines, yes key lines in my opinion um, are to keep us focused inside an image and not to take us outside of the image that's right. why we talk about every now and then where a key line uh you know let's take this one for instance if it was way out here to me that would be something that would be a distraction you know taking me out of the image so um for what you know for what that's worth but composition i think it's well done you know the one yeah. other point that i just noticed um you talked before about impact of centering it, and it looks to me like the the there's a little bit more space on the right side of the flower than the left. And I mean, it's a small mood point, but I mean, yeah. if you redo this, that would be real easy to fix. Right. Yeah. There is one comment here that maker. Yeah. Says, uh, it was pointed out was slightly out of focus pedal on the right, and also suggested looking at using rule of thirds more, but how? Well, I don't think, first of all, I don't think um, rule of thirds, to me anyhow, is just one composition element. I don't think it, to me, I don't like the rule of thirds. Um, there's so many other elements of design, elements of composition that I think are stronger. And I don't know that forcing this into a rule of thirds would help this. Um, I'm not even I, sure how I would do that, but I think... I mean, I liked it how it is, and I think we've all mentioned just not having the top of the flower just gives it the uniqueness. This didn't, I didn't even catch this before what Bob said, but I definitely see that now once it's pointed out that if some leaves were put in there. Um, but I, I mean, I think the composition, and sometimes that that center or almost bullseye composition, which a lot of times is, is well, it's, it's not wrong. It's just very strong. It's very powerful. And right. if if it's not strong enough to let you wander out from the center, then it doesn't work. But this one has, you know, beautiful colors coming all the way out that force you to go out and look at. And of course, the subject matter of the bee, it forces you to go out. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking it looks so close to being sharp, the little hairs there. Um, so I'm, to the maker, I bet this could be sharpened up in like um, Topaz, uh, the new photo AI. If you haven't used that, man, that just does a phenomenal job in, in, because this is worth something to try again and enter again. Yeah, and, and you know, we talk about rule of thirds. With this cropping and presentation, uh, I don't think rule of thirds would be appropriate at all. Right. Uh, no, I agree with that too. You know, that that pedal that, we're, that somebody is talking about being a, a soft, 
And it is. And I didn't even notice that before that was brought up. So that's one of those cases where unless a judge brought that up, I didn't even see that because I'm looking at the beauty of everything else. Yeah. But it is one thing that I've heard over and over and over again when it comes to flowers. If they're not sharp in the center, yeah, judges have problems with it. And so I and I like I agree with Jeff. I think there's enough detail there that all you'd have to do is is uh, lasso that uh, that center and the bee a little bit and sharpen that up and even that one petal just a little bit if you want to make it safe. Don't overdo it, of course. I, yeah, we can zoom in like that. That the bee, I mean, it doesn't take. It's not going to take much at all. No, right. And this is a this is a no no in the sense of image competition. Is the, the judges cannot do not enlarge the image, so don't worry about that. But right. for the case of what we're talking about here, I think that's so close to being sharper. I mean, that looks pretty good on the bee, but it's just a little bit. And I think also, oops, sorry, if the center of the bee of the, what is this here flower <laughs> was just a little bit lighter i think it would appear a little sharper too because you've got this deep shadows that just kind of pulling it and blending it in but you can see a little bit more of the because i mean look at the edge of those petals right there that's pretty yeah. pretty clean the very point maybe not so sharp but i think that can be fixed just enough and uh, that photo ai is almost magic sometimes oh isn't it it's terrible yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right I just saw another. We have another quick comment. I just saw something else pop up in the chat. Are we good? The, the maker said the center was oh. intentionally softened. Okay. Oh. Um, that's risky. I yeah, like, might, like, might, might not want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what we were thinking there, John. He said he found it to be distracting. Okay. Yeah. So um, there was a, there was a lot of yellow pollen in the red. Right. And. It was just it was it was uh, it was messy, and so I I tried to get rid of as much of the yellow dots in the red portion as I could, and uh, and then thought I'd soften it up a little bit because it just the way it was it looked too harsh. Um, but so it it can definitely be uh, if I just leave the softening out, it'll be sharp again. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm just thinking even something like, um, I mean, quickly do a, uh, um, oh, what am I looking for here? If you don't mind if I play a little bit here, um, where my adjustment panel go? Whoops, I just put it away. <clears throat> I got too many things open here. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Um, my little favorite trick is to take the um, curves adjustment layer, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna drag it up and lighten it. Then I'm gonna invert that and take this a brush with the whoops blush is tiny. There we go, and take the uh, um, um, opposite paint color, and then I'm just gonna let me do bigger here. I'm just gonna kind of do this really harsh and rough and I didn't have a soft edge brush that was a mistake yeah <laughs> just that area and then take the opacity of that layer just down so it's because I mean here's what it is and I'm just talking about maybe even like right there so I think what you're saying John about all that pollen I know what you're talking about that's a mess but just lightening up that whole area just enough will give it that little bit more of a sharpened feel um and it won't seem so so dark in that center. I mean, we're talking little tiny bits, but look at how much more pop that center has. I don't know why I made it so small. Sorry. <laughs> Scroll wheel on the mouse here. Just a thought. Yeah, I'll, give that, I'll give it a shot. Thanks. May, we may be wrong. You never know. Okay, let me move on here. <laughs> All right. So we now those have... green spots that I was talking about on there, I would put the pedal behind it, not in front of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sunrise Virga. And it's opening. There we go. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, my goodness. Let me just go back here and try this again and try this in English. Come on. There we go. Okay. Don't click anything, Jeff. I'm just trying to get it into... Uh... <laughs> Zoomy. 
and I don't know what I did differently. This, anyways, I'll I'll take the hand step away from the steering wheel. Okay, <laughs> Rick, what do you think? I, I I'm just uh, visually cropping it um, from the bottom up. <clears throat> I mean, it's a powerful image in, in terms of um, impact. You know, we've got all this beautiful orange red um, color that's so powerful um above the the little peak but you know we're looking at in my as i'm seeing it a silhouette of this landscape and i'm cropping up from the bottom just taking out the water from the bottom and to me it just there's more impact to that uh, what do you guys think Trying to pull up the crop tool here, but it's uh, let me. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I should have done that. Uh, I'm I'm looking like think of like that, something along that line. Yeah, I'll let you and, do your line there. Well, I mean, here I'm going to be on the opposite side of the fence on that because I think that water reflection down there adds some interest to it. Um, you could maybe take some of the black off the bottom. The one thing I wish, and I don't know, Jeffy could maybe tell us if that's even a possibility, but it almost seems like those clouds are too high up. I wish you could shrink the middle space some <laughs> without making it look fake. Actually, that's, I mean, I've done, I've gone in and you could actually slice out like this section here and then drop it in. So you bring that verga down to the mountain. That's a possibility. Cause I see what you're saying. It's, it's, it's what it is. That's what happens. Verga a lot of times is, right. is high up there, but yeah, I think for this photograph, just bringing it in. And I don't, I mean, that reflection is pretty, but I think, you know, Rick had a, a good point here. If we could even just bring it like, yeah, like right here and then, and then take out that the hot spot to the yeah. left. John is asking if that would be legal for competition. Sure. It's just, you're just manipulating your image. And I mean, it's an image you shot and you're just, yeah, you know, it's just a crop. Yeah. You you're just the take artist. It. Yeah, you're the artist. You're just taking bits and pieces. And then the other thing you don't want to do is to stand on your front porch and tell everybody you did it, too. Great. <laughs> it's your yeah, artistic. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't referring to the crop, but I mean, shrinking down the middle space, That that's, uh, I was wondering if that's legal. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it's if you were to bring in, a, 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 well, even that, if you were to, I mean, people replace clouds all the time um, mm -hmm. in scenes. That's totally totally okay so um it's, it's all be done well i'm you know, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna guess this is a single capture am i right is the maker yes the johns yeah beautiful color I mean, it's, color it's absolutely awesome. gorgeous and, and like we're saying all along john don't don't um don't take it personally we're picking it apart because i think this is the kind of thing you could put on oh geez i'm so sorry i bumped the mouse um, you could easily put this on a poster or gift card or, or sell it on, you know, some Fine Art America site. Um, but again, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking the, the Grinches of PPA competition. <laughs> right. Well, you know, for, for like a greeting card, you've got some beautiful space in here to add text to it. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I mean, it, it's gorgeous from, from that standpoint. So that's a totally different situation than, than competition. Right. The yeah. only other point I would make too is I'm I'm not so sure that I wouldn't go a little bit darker yet with the mat. Yeah, yes. would you would go darker? darker. I, would, yeah, I was going to ask about the mat there. Probably yeah, wouldn't think... hurt to, to take the, the black from the silhouette of the of the peak here and go the whole mat. That would probably work too. Probably. You know, would, yeah. Bob made a really good point, and I mean, I I just drew this uh, line in the middle excellent opportunity for some kind of um copy text whatever and it could be anything i mean this this image lends itself to something um you know it could be spiritual it could be uh motivational uh but right in this area great for text so you know and it's it, it's it's you know something that we can could consider for competition but let's don't forget about uh you know, making some bucks on all this. Oh, absolutely. Did, did is Fox this by spot Jack right here, Lewis? is that a star? I'm seeing a hot pixel. Yeah, I, I was looking at that. I thought it's a hot pixel. You know what, though? Um, 
Where are you guys looking? It's circled. No, it's no circled. somebody hit. Oh, okay. Somebody so was, it's not. I don't see the circle. Gotcha. It's okay. Gone. No, no. It's gone. Here's what it was. It was just a little tap of a pen. Gotcha. Oh, there you go. Oh. Yeah, I was just going to say, if it's a star, I would take that out because it looks like a dust speck. Yeah, no, no, it was. <laughs> Good job I taking take, it out, Jeff. <laughs> I take it. <laughs> or you can put a, flock, put a flock of geese right in here. Come, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's move along. We're doing well here. Okay. Keep forgetting to close this because. These guys don't know what it was like to have to do that with a cotolith uh, of some. Oh, geese. my God. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Turns from the path. Shapes yeah. on the dunes. Shapes on the dunes. Go, Jeffy. So cool. <laughs> such um, such awesome. Uh, first of all, the thing that catches my eyes is the the uh, tonal range in here is done very well. Not just contrast, but tonal range. I mean, we get some bright tones in the highlights, but it's not blown out. You know, we got some beautiful things in here that's just not. Um, oops, hang on, I got one more person coming into the room. Um, the only thing that kind of and the mat is supporting and the little key line very very nicely done. Um, the only thing that pulls me, and I know we got black up here, and this is dark, but it's kind of a gray. This just being so black, it just kind of pulls me in. I don't know what you can do with it, but what do you guys think about that whole thing? Um, that was uh, one of the things that uh, caught my eye, uh, and I agree with you. Tonal range, you know, it's interesting because sometimes you have black and white images that are a scene. Uh, how can I say that uh, uh, they're more of a study in black and white than they are of a scene. And this is one of those images to me. Um, I just felt though that uh, I agree with you, uh, <clears throat> Jeff, you know, as far as the dead space here. Oh yeah. Could be. And, and I'll bet you, I'll bet you could even lighten that up enough to bring it in to see this, this tonal range right here, this shadow, yeah. this little bit of detail in there. I bet this could be brought to that, which would be a big help. There you go. I would crop maybe this is going a little fuzzy here. Maybe that could be burned down a little bit to, to crisp it up, but I'd almost take a half an inch off the top there. I don't think I'd want to go down into this point over here, but just to, above that that might get rid of this everything else will, looks so nice can you flip this upside down once jeff sure. i just want to see one of the tricks that we used to do all the time is if yeah. you're not sure if you're looking at the <laughs> right place flip your image upside down and what catches your eye first yep i do that all the time still absolutely a great idea for and then you look at it and see what um what catches your eye and is that then I always ask myself, is that helping or hindering my image? So right. But I mean right. this this light coming across this ridge, look at this roundness here and yep. and also and I'm even kind of looking at it. I'm gonna take it back here and um so get back <clears> to <throat> the shop here. Oh, this is so annoying here that this what would you think about taking all that stuff out of there that's above that ridge line that's just what i was going to do actually just make it a black black spot up there that or even um i was looking at i mean i love this tone in here or, and that yeah. ridge yeah but let's just look at maybe even let's not lose that curves over there but maybe even just like you said leave bring that kind of coming from the point up there but yeah i, I would i might take this out leave that go although if i do that then we've got a lot of black up there right that's true yeah i don't but know slim it up even some more off the bottom i know i like those lines but i wonder what yeah kind of i i would do the same thing I, I would come up from the bottom yeah maybe yeah Ooh. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. And, you know, yes. See, this it's don't one me. part right up here. I would just, I mean, that could be toned down some. So it would blend in yeah. with the black more. And it would probably be a little less distracting. But... And, you know, the previous rendition of this image didn't allow us the strength of this diagonal line coming into it. 
because there was so much in the foreground that okay yeah we see yeah we see a little bit of leading line but now that you cropped it it's i mean in your face leading in oh yeah, yeah. That, that is so much of a different image it's not even funny that's i uh, love that slim line on that i mean this is beautiful the, the way the ripples in the sand but this oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the image even stronger yep oh, yeah now talk about presentation guys what do you think what what can we do with it i think this could go either black or white and even even a gray i mean you've got beautiful tonal range throughout the whole thing you could take a mid-tone like in this area oops i don't have my pen <laughs> moving the image instead. and and you know um i would i would go with a gallery fine art gallery off-white matte yeah, because you could bring it into like the tone of this gray right in here. Yeah. And it would still appear a bright <laughs> whiter, but it would be that that gray. I like that's almost a <laughs> Ansel Adams type of a what was it, Bob? I like the black man. <laughs> well, if the maker <laughs> is listening, different. yeah, if the, well, if the maker's listening, that's what Rick was talking about earlier. Do both and just see what you what what kind of you lean to. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, for a museum, I, you know, yes. And actually, you know, it depends upon where the image is going to be hanging, you know. But for competition, we're not concerned about where it's going to be hanging. We're concerned about what we're looking at. And we want our attention to be drawn to the beauty of the image and not taken away by the mat. And so if the mat overpowers it or makes it look muddy then because it's too bright, then, then right. that's where I run into problems. Right, right. And, and from my experience... <laughs> the maker will pick a nice gray and enter it, and there'll be a judge going, Maybe that should be white. And then they'll take yeah. white for the next panel, and the judge will say, That should probably be a black mat. So I don't think <laughs> you're going to win that one. So good luck to no. you. A nice job. Nice capture. Great, okay, great, great, great. Great. There. <laughs> yeah. You got to please yourself first. Isn't that well, true? When you're trying to get good scores, you really got to please the judges. <laughs> good point. All right. Good let's point. see where we are here. Let's go with oh, this guy here. Let's try this one here. Searching for dinner with my feathers crossed. So just look at that for a minute and see what what that says. I'm afraid to hit zoom because it's going to go in. <coughs> I think this is very cool. I mean, first of all, I just spent the last weekend photographing eagles, and it ain't easy. <laughs> it ain't easy at all. There's some people out there. A couple of them in the audience here, they're just audience, awesome at that. Um, so first of all, my hat's off for getting such a very crisp, realistic capture. It's sharp. It's got beautiful uh, lighting all through it. So it's a very depth, um, you know, three-dimensional. doesn't look flat. Um, that position of the bird coming in, it's looking, it's probably spotted its prey and it's making its dive. Um, the sky and the color of the mat. And the only thing I might change, minor thing, is just that little white pinstripe. I don't see that as being a necessary. Hey, Amen. That. But that's about it. Otherwise, this is <laughs> position. I mean, Bob, what do you think? The white line doesn't bother me at all because it okay. kind of picks up in the in the bird. True. Um, it it really makes that pop. I do like the the little shadow from the other key line. I mean, I think I like the presentation. Maybe tone that white line down just a little bit if if you're concerned about it, but I don't mind it being there. Okay. I love the composition. That position of that bird is is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, that's a high score there. Rick, what do you think? Oh, uh, I would be way up on, on this, but I would agree the key line, the white key line, uh, isn't, in my opinion, adding a whole lot. Uh, we take that out. We have the, like Bob said, the drop shadow from the other key line uh, is just, you know, terrific. I, I, yeah, I, I would think just taking out that uh, white key line. Uh, could, uh, the reason I'm saying that is because elements, you know, we've got so many things to look at in an image and um, what's adding to it, what's taking away from it. Uh, yeah. This is such a beautiful image. You know, we've got the really soft blue mat, 
then a dark blue key line and the drop shadow. Then we have a white key line around the image. A lot of things to look at. And I want to just enjoy uh, the image itself, the subject. And uh, I think just taking out that white key line would do it for me. Yeah, I, I think I can agree. Because, I mean, we, it's, there's a lot of beautiful mats and the drop shadows and the cutouts and all that stuff. But that, that old adage about just because you can doesn't mean you should sometimes. So, Well, it's, right. a, it's a lot like, you know, when somebody comes in with a dark shirt on to have their portrait done, they've got a white t-shirt on underneath. Yeah. You know, right. it is it a problem? No, because that's the way they always wear it. But right. it takes away from the image. You're not going to miss it if it's not there. But if it's there, it's going to look crooked or it's going to grab your attention. It's like white socks with black shoes in a portrait, yeah. you know? Um, <laughs> well, that's true. Exactly. I was just thinking that same thing. <laughs> when in doubt, leave it out, you know? Well, hold on a darn minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look okay. down at me. Uh, oh, Nerve struck. Nerve struck. <laughs> Nerve struck. <laughs> well, you know, um, oh, hell, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh. Um, <laughs> I think we get to a point sometimes with, that um, we can do these cool mats and all this kind of stuff. And, and you know, remember the, the mat is supportive. It's it's supposed to be there to because we have to put one in there. So it needs to not attract attention. I mean, this isn't bad at all. We're being very yeah. picky. The other thing I was going to say is, especially when we're talking about when an image is done very well, and and I guess it's just human nature. The judges were looking for something to, okay, well, maybe, you know, this should be a hundred. No, maybe that little white piece straight. That should, it's going to bring it down to 99. Okay. Nitpicking, I know, but that's how it works. So just, that's where we're going with it. So, all right, all right. we got to move along. <laughs> let's see. I have, uh, oh, let's go with this beautiful piece right here. This is called Moonscape Morning. Wow. What for you to get up in time for that one? Yeah, let's just say it. I know you two aren't, but <laughs> <laughs> I would. I'm sorry, I didn't hear Good that. Bob, okay. I, I said, Cliff, would you get up in time to do that? <laughs> no. Cliff would no. <laughs> no. You know, though, Bob, Rick, Rick would be there, but he would be photographing us, photographing this. this <laughs> okay, well, that's all right too, I guess, as long yeah. as he's there. Yeah. But what an amazing capture at this time of the day. We get this bright, bright light coming through, and and it does color those rocks that way. Um, but the the soft little uh, let me get my little tool here because that's so much fun. Um, but I love all this little soft kiss of light along along these guys here, and of course the edges of the. But I mean, look at the definition it's creating here in the fanules of the rock, even coming across the floor of the canyon. Look at all those beautiful highlights. Um, well, they're beautiful leading lines. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, even just the, the mountain, look at the nice little light on the edges of the mountain way in the distance. Um, we're, you know, the, the thought we're getting kind of close to the horizon line to center, but I, that doesn't bother me at all because there's so much else going on that it doesn't ask for a lot of attention. Rick, do you have any thoughts on the landscape here? Uh, yeah, uh, you hit it with the, the horizon. I think we have a beautiful sky that's working and we can still come down. Uh, let's see, maybe this ish is ish ish just to, pull, <laughs> just, just to pull the horizon up a little higher, but beautiful rendition, rendition and color. Um, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, color contrast, the warms. The warm colors to the right, cool color. I mean, it's it's there. The the key line is a little bit. It could be a little brighter, maybe. Yes, I think it needs to be just a little bit brighter because it's like you don't notice it, and then once you do yes. notice, you're fighting the. Oh yeah, it's, it needs to be. Or detached. So you're thinking so something like this. Is it yeah, detached? I think it is detached, but it's detached. so faint you can't yeah. already see it. Okay. So you're thinking some uh, crop more like this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, the, uh, um, let's see if I go back in history here, because it's, I hate this. I cannot remember to close this tool so I can get to the rest of the tools. Sorry about that. There we go. Yeah, it's there. It's detached, but it's just very faint. Um, oh, yeah, it's okay. a little bit. A little oh, bit yeah, more, yeah. I a little do bit more color. But I don't even mind the blue mat and the color of the of the uh, key line is good. So, 
Beautiful okay. piece. Guys, uh, Bob, Jeffy, can we talk a little bit about the mats and textures, overlays, et cetera, on a map? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I I like that kind of stuff, but man, you got to be real subtle with it. I mean, I I'm not one to play it safe, but sometimes when you've got in an image like this, you've got all this texture of these. I mean, not just in the face of the rock and the and the the uh, sunlight, but even back here on the <clears throat> the shadow part of the cliff edge there. But look at all the texture and tones patterns in the sky and if you add a texture to that mat um i can guarantee you a judge is going to say it's too much Bob, well, what do you, you, you would have to be subtle with it i mean there's a lot oh, of yeah. times where i take a sampling of uh, an area in the image itself and then enlarge it way up and use it as an overlay right you know, um, cut the opacity way 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 down so it's just there but not in your face you know that's, that's where i'm going with that city uh i think a lot of images uh, uh submissions could be improved with just a in just a uh i don't know a breakup of the mat not just you know not necessarily um uh, something that's really grabbing your attention just something to to break up that solid color yeah uh, it could be a pebble texture that's uh, cut down or pass it way down just something to it because remember guys when we used to print we had our our mats that we printed on the photograph and they were yeah. like solid black right and, and that was okay and that was cool back in the 90s but uh i'm just thinking of you know something to so that the mat isn't just a solid color, but has a little bit of character, I guess yeah. is the best way I can describe it. I agree. All right, we're gonna move along here. I just have a few more to go. Let's go with uh, this guy right here. This is called Mama Read to Me. Ricky, why don't you jump into this nice portrait? Yeah, yeah. Um, this image, and this kind of image will sell by the boatloads. Um, you know, the lighting is handled well. Um, you know, there's obviously storytelling to it. Uh, you know, as far as impact, we're drawn into it. Uh, in terms of um, composition, I think we're cropping a little tight from camera right into the subjects, and we're leaving a lot of room to the left, uh, a lot of... Um, real estate on the uh, top of the image i think that uh, can be used in a different way uh, definitely storytelling but uh, uh, you know the lighting i think is i, I mentioned about it uh, maybe we can improve that by bringing the lighting either either way camera left and a, a little lower or, or camera right because it it's, seems to be coming from uh, you know the top area and putting highlights on the tips of the noses and the bridge of the nose of the mama and uh, just kind of creating a little bit of a distortion. So what do you think, Bob? This is another one where flip it upside down once, Jeff. Okay. You know, the, the attention is going to go to that page and the noses. I think you're right, uh, Rick. If you brought that light in from the the, well, now it's hard to tell because it's upside down. But um, you said I know. <laughs> flip it, flip it, yeah. So if you bring the 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 main light in from the right side to the, it, you first of all, two things are going to happen. You're going to get better light in the eyes. We're not going to get that bright spot on the noses, and the mother's hair is going to lighten up on that side too because that's so dark compared to all this other beautiful pastel stuff that's going on right minor thing but something i noticed when i had it upside down here was all of a sudden this black yep spot pulls my attention off that way um just kind of feel like the um the cropping overall um like it's just bottom right heavy and if it was kind of moved up like you guys mentioned so we have a little bit more hair hand wouldn't be at the edge just I would be a little bit more comfortable and I always like to see pictures uh, portraits with 
babies, young people, moms and babies like this, a little bit more room. So like it gives them room to grow. It gives them room to tell the story. And this just feels a little tight, like we've been saying. So, Yeah. And on the finished uh, end of it, uh, you know, if if it were presented like this, you know, toning down the tips of the noses that we talked about, and then the arm of the babe on the yeah. camera, because you 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 see the value of um, tonal value of her little arm compared to mom's hand, which I understand is underneath the book and the lighting and etc. But there's such a a vast difference between tonal values there. How do you guys feel about the mushiness in, in the hair and the whatever has been done to the outfits? I, kind of, I don't mind. I kind of get the feeling it's almost a, a soft, a, a soft focus kind of a feeling. I mean, I don't. Yeah, mind. it almost is tending to be kind of a painter type of a yeah. look. Yeah, like they changed the color or something. Right, right, and and you know if there were. If there's room on the file or to to go back and do it again, I'm looking at this as uh, what if we did a oh, excuse me. What if we did a, a horizontal type of an image? And I'm not saying that you know we're gonna have all this room there, but uh horizontal so that or even square. Square, yeah. Square would be really nice, yeah. Cool. You would need you would need her hand, the mom's hand down there because you know something's holding the book. Right. I would get rid of that black hole down on the bottom. Well, you'd cut off the hand. You'd crop the hand off totally, though, right? You wouldn't cut. Yeah, it right. Don't leave just the fingertips there. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean the the concept is there. I would encourage the maker to, you know, continue doing this or do some more of this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do yeah. Either invite this mom and little one back in or, you know, next time you have the opportunity, definitely keep working on this because you're getting it. It's just fine, fine tuning. That's what we're And maybe for. coordinating their colors just a little bit more. True. Yeah, because I, I don't mind so much the color of the dress and the sh and mom's shirt here. But when you see all mom's arm here compared to right. other, it's asking for attention. So good point. Right. All right. Let's see. We only got a couple more here. We have. Let's go with uh, this very powerful piece. Lightning scares my mares. Whoa. Zeddy. What a great action. Yeah. Bob, what do you think? It is great action. <laughs> They're all butts except the one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's the brave one. I guess. It, is it just me or do they look kind of mushy? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. mean, let me I'm break. seeing the main guy fairly sharp. But... Okay. Yeah, let me uh break the rule here. It's, I think it's plenty sharp. There's plenty of detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even, even the just, horse at the back seemed to be fine, too. I just got the feeling it looked on my end that, like they ran portraiture on it and, and it uh, over softened some areas of the, the you know, animal's fur texture and not others. You think the uh, the color, because we've got a very limited color range here from the shadow of the highlights and pretty much reds to browns, is kind of kind of keep it from looking sharp too. That could be, yeah. Uh... Because there's a, a bit of a vignette you can see on the side, which I think is done very nicely, but it's really muting things just to give us this really awesome story, great story. Um, oh, even yeah. the color of the mat and the placement. Now, now we're talking about key lines. I might say this one's a little bit far out. I know we're being real picky, but maybe half the distance to the goal here might be a little, because it is asking for attention. It's dividing this quite a bit. So maybe if, you know, boom in here, I think. Thoughts there, guys? It is a double key line, too, where the one is, we're losing oh, sure. part of it on the top, too. Yeah, and if you look at what we were talking about, how you can see the double key line down here, but when you look at the sky, where it's similar color key line, you lose it totally. And, and I can promise you other judges <laughs> will say something about it. So either change the color or, or don't have that key line, keystroke on that. Right. So. 
Yeah. Any more thoughts, Rick, on this one? No, a lot oh, of you times did. what you could do if you wanted some other separation there instead of a key line is just take that image and without, uh, you put a drop shadow behind that very faint, um, just around the, the image part of it, not very wide, but that yeah. can give you a little separation. But then again, you got to be careful that that doesn't fall off or, you know, with some of those dark areas and blend in too. Yeah. The trick I've been doing is to take for the this set of a key line is to take a, an actual shape and then add an inner shadow to it where you get that little shadow. Oh, yeah. You get that. Stop talking to me like that. <laughs> My phone's yelling at me. You're sorry about that. So you get that just that little shadow and it's and then you can eliminate this key line and it's just very subtle. And even if it's the same color or maybe the, the uh, lip, then the liner could be a little darker, a little lighter. Um, very subtle and looks has that nice dimension to it. So, but I think this is really an awesome um, presentation. Color, I like the colors. Different, really has a. I don't want the right word. It's kind of ominous in a sense that they're running. They're scared. Something's got them. So, yeah. Nice job. It, it, and I get the story. Lightning scares my mares. He's here's the stud, and he's you know facing yeah. the storm and uh, protecting or uh, you know. The ladies, the ladies, yeah. Well, storytelling is a strong element. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, we just got a couple more to go through here tonight. We're running out of time. We got about ten minutes left, so let's go with. Uh, let's see, did we get them all? I got them all. Let's go with this one here. Going home. Okay. That's one of the ugliest bird photographs I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> see if I can do this without getting there. Oh, never mind. Hold on. Come on. Shrink. Thank you. All right. Wow. I mean, <laughs> what can you say? Uh, the placement, the lighting, the composition, background. Uh, gosh, it's all there. Now, help me with this, Jeffy. Is that a, a gray mat? Is that what we're seeing? So let me just, if I can work my fingers right here. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of texture in it. Yeah, okay. But I think it's it's a grayish. Maybe it looks yeah. like it. I don't know if it's influenced by the sky or if it's, but it's color coordinated, so. Right, right. If those yeah. birds are sharp, it's awesome. Yeah, I agree. Go, Seti. Bob, That's... any more thoughts on it? Oh, I, I, I love the composition and everything. It's, it, if the birds are sharp, it's awesome. Leave it alone then, you know? <laughs> yeah. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. Okay, hands off the mouse. All right. Cool. Yeah. Good job. Let's see what else we have here. We have... Sorry for the maker. I mean, they paid to have it, <laughs> you know, evaluated. But what can you say with something that's so nice as that? Isn't that's like true? when we have to critique loan prints, you know, it's like, okay. I know. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. What do you say? It's like, okay. I wish it was mine. <laughs> yeah. It's that, it's that story of the, uh, the weatherman in San Diego. Bob, how's the weather in San Diego? <laughs> it's, it's nice. nice. Back to you. <laughs> well, how come when we judged out there, it rained and was cold <laughs> the whole time? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, they didn't watch. Okay. This one's called Stark White. Thoughts? I like the white mat on this one. I do too. A lot. I, you know, it's a picky, picky thing, but just a little bit more space uh, for me. Uh, let's see. Let me get my. Can you talk about the flower? Just right here and right here, just a little bit more space. And I'll bet you they have that on the on the file. If not, they can certainly build it. But uh, it just. To me, just a little bit of a tension point for a subject that, in my opinion, should be more soothing, so to speak. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Though. Yeah, so it, because it's a, kind of a softer feeling object, it's kind of a ten, tension building. Right. Guys but look at how beautiful. I mean, it, it's sharp in the center and it's still soft. I mean, it's it's really got a beautiful feel to it. Right, right. Here's this drop shadow I was talking about on the mat. Earlier. Yeah, I like that. 
it's just uh you can see it's just a little bit of instead of a key line or anything it's just that little drop shadow so it kind of has that feeling of a i like that uh, oops sorry cool all right i think we're there guys i think we oh no i'm sorry sorry to the maker didn't mean to forget this one this is called god's brilliance great title mm -hmm. taking yeah. it taking into consideration um the beauty of nature. So I think the the flower and everything is is uh, done. I mean, nice soft light from the window. Uh, it's very beautiful colors. Um, unfortunately, it looks like a television screen and the cables back there that um, just aren't working with the um, theme of the image. And they're you know pulling my eye away. I don't mind the the window, uh, the blinds, the shutters, um, and uh, this must be the turn stick there to open up the shutters little things like that just kind of pull you away from the subject matter beautiful colors of the stamen and all the lovely look at the beautiful little feathering of the colors on the both front and back of the flower but thoughts guys yeah um you know just a, a really nice uh approach to this image uh I'm, as i see it on my monitor it's just a little um hazy uh in the main flower and that may or may not be my monitor but you hit it jeff with all the elements there's a lot of things in this image um that draws attention the cables yeah. that you mentioned the screen etc um but we we talked a, a few times tonight about presentation um but we didn't talk about full bleeds so maybe you can help help us with that, Zidi. Well, I, I think that it's you can do a full bleed if you want to, but I think it's much more interesting if you add a, a mat and some presentation to it. Um, this one might have been better cropped in a little bit tighter too. I mean, you could have got rid of those cables um, and the tape on the bottom of the flowers. But I think you're right. There is a flare coming in from the the window on the on the left hand side, that's uh, muting the colors of the the flower petals there, um, and that TV screen really is a big distraction. If it was that whole tan wall and you got rid of the uh, the turn stick and the, you know those kinds of things, it it's it would be much stronger. But again, I would still do a, a presentation with a, some sort of mat. Yeah. No. You, know, you know, we're talking about that AI stuff, and this might be not something for competition, but it could be, this could be fun to take this into, especially the new Photoshop beta, and get rid of that background, have the flower be selected and get rid of that background and do something totally different. Because I mean, the flower is, is beautiful. I think I'm feeling a little bit of flare from this window on the front of this flower, because the colors look great and saturated back here. That's the only issue, but maybe just letting it select the flower and drop in some other background you might have something pretty cool and there's just a thought right all right let's see i think we got one more here we can talk about let's talk about this one here man of the street whoa there's your texture on your mat for you there yeah. you go yeah Man. Rick, it's a up your alley portrait. What do you yeah, think? what a capture. What a capture. You know, we've got pretty strong uh, contrast. I think I would like to see the, the subject and the scene itself kind of a tonal value uh, sepia that would go mm -hmm. with the mat. So not the, uh, not the blue. I was thinking the same thing. Yep. Okay. Oh, man. That's, that's, can you zoom in? I, I would love to see his expression. Oh wow! Well. Those yeah. eyes. Yeah, uh, there's some. Um, what is it? Desaturation or whatever that's going on here. But I would definitely consider going into some kind of a sepia to go with the mat. The mat is fabulous. Uh, yeah. It would warm. It would give you a, a warm feeling to. Uh, yeah. A cold situation, you know. Right. Right. Dang. I wish I'd done that. <laughs> yeah that does take the uh just going with uh simply going yeah. black and white 
it definitely takes the uh it lets you look at the face and the beard and the hands and yeah 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 his feet whoops sorry too much as it was weathered feet wow yeah and and if we can bring up some kind of bits of detail in the pant uh pants i think would help it dang yeah, it's maybe just a little bit over contrast see yeah yeah i agree okay Dang. It's so cool to see uh, images like this, uh, uh, portraits, um, and they don't, you know, not necessarily portraits per se, but people images. Uh, I mean, that's just, like that. that just uh, lights my fire. Uh, well, and this is one of those that, I mean, I consider it a portrait, but it could go in illustrative. Sure. It could go in uh, um the new, you know, the repertoire category. Repertage, yeah. Repertage, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it it probably would do best there if it's not been over manipulated or. Right. right. So on the repertage, don't you have to be able to? I mean, I think it's true with any category now. But don't you have to be able to come up with your original file to prove if there's any questions about it? Uh, I think if it's questioned, I don't, it's not part of the submission. It's not like a tear sheet like we used to have to do with commercial. Right, right, right. That's a very nice piece. No. Okay. Yeah, you're, I think... you're allowed to do mats like that in, in that category, right? Yeah. And, but you know, uh, Bob, um, I, I think in reportage, the simpler the presentation, the better, mm -hmm. because I think what they're trying to do. It's kind of keep in line with the um, uh, what are we calling it? Uh, photojournalistic. I'm sorry. Like uh, photojournalistic kind of. Yeah, but uh, uh, that competition we have with the other countries. Uh, oh, oh, oh the, yeah. The World Cup stuff. World Cup. There you go. Because I I judged the very first round of that, and I was surprised to see how many were full bleeds. Uh, it was really interesting, but they kind of are more simplified, if you would, as far as the presentations. I got two more images. We're starting to get close to our, not that it's so serious, but. So this one's called Breakfast. Oh, oh. go, Bobby. Oh, that's cool. I mean, there's there's just enough detail in the snow. I love the way the background is just totally blurred out. Yeah. Um the presentation works very well with this. Yeah. The black line picks up the the black and the owl. Yeah, what a great stop action. What do you think of I mean I, I love this, but do you think what if this blue cast of this the tree line back there, if that was less? I mean, you can't get rid of it, but like maybe not a little more blue gray instead of sky seed magentas and well, and you know, when I'm thinking of a scene like this in the cold, okay. I'm feeling blue, uh, you know, a blue tone, blue color. My concern, and maybe you guys help me, is the background, the horizon line tilted just a tad to the left. That could be. Yeah, very slight. Good call, Rick. I'd say like maybe one degree or two degrees. Well, that's how good I am. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and that concludes our broadcast. Uh, <laughs> well, it's hard because there's no def no defining real sharp line back there in the and but it's minor, but it's just kind of a feeling that you get a little bit of a tip. Um <clears throat> and then the oh, sorry, that's just uh mouse over black and white if you want to see what that looks like. Um <clears throat> excuse me. I love this. This is absolutely, I mean, look at the, you're in, you're in right in there with this, whatever they're going to grab, probably a mouse or something. But I mean, look at this. Oh, let's say we're done. <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, look at this, this canopy of the wings that's really zeroing in the focus of the bird and the capture here. And play, uh, that's just outstanding capture. That's, that's outstanding work on the photographer's part is what I see from the little bit I've done of, of birdage um this is beautiful yeah i concur okay, I, don't, I don't mind the black and white at all <laughs> what if you click on blue tone what does it do 
no. Yeah. Ah! No, definitely not that one. Sorry, that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so here's here's kind of a what do they call this one? <clears throat> it's kind of I don't care for that. Um, this is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, there's enough of a line there that you could conceivably um, try and put that lighter up on the top. I kind of, yeah. I, I would, I would say, just from my point of view, to the maker, maybe just play with this, not remove it or anything, but maybe just play with it, tone it down, make it a little bit lighter. The color is fine, but maybe just kind of try and play down this line, this gradation line, just a little bit more to let the bird stand out even more. I don't know. Worth worth playing with, if that makes sense. Rick, any more thoughts? Oh, you know what you could do is you can cut that bird out of there, at least the top part, raise that horizon line just uh, up here, a quarter an inch or half an inch or whatever, so that the bird's wing doesn't touch that horizon line. Well, that's kind of, I think that's a good call. Did we lose Rick? You know what? Uh, uh, we did. And and uh, I was talking about when I got cut off about the horizon line um, above the the wing, you know, uh, taking the horizon line and bringing it up just a little bit so that there isn't that uh, you know that tangent point. Yeah, the wing. right. That's what I think I'm seeing too. Just where the wing and the horizon line come together, it pulls them together. Even though there's nice softness in the background, if there was a little bit of snow above the wing, I think right. we could keep that background uh, farther out of the uh, subject, I guess. I don't know. Right, right. To the maker, if you're listening, if that doesn't make sense, call call one of us. We're happy to talk more yeah. about it. Call, call oh, me. That would be Rick's number so he can talk to you about and that, it. And that's a good point, Jeffy, because, you know, we're going through a lot of technical stuff here and, you know, people, members trying to get in and there's some hangups. So if there's anything technical that you want to know about, call me and I'll give you Jeff's number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, that's how that goes. All right, let's see if we can get rid of the picture now. There we go. I got one more to look at here, and uh, it went right. Sure, I think it's covered up there. Hold on a sec. Come on. No, if I get them all, maybe I got them all. You see any that I haven't brought up? Oh, I guess Definitely that's some nice images. Yes, very nice. Somebody holler me if I'm missing something. I don't want to forget. I think we got it all. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at them too as you're You got them all too. Yep, I think we did. Okay. I thought when I opened the last one there was two, but I guess not. So let's uh get me let's let's uh stop sharing here and everybody's still here. That's cool. I see a lot of comments. Hey, does anybody have any any thoughts, any comments that uh, questions? Um oh let's see. Candy, you submitted two images and you only see one of them. You got to it. You got to it, Jeff. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That was the last one. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. I think I just skipped over it earlier. Sorry about that. Um, beautiful work, everybody. And I hope that again, you know, we saw it would sound like a broken record, but the whole idea of this is is to be helpful. Yeah, we're having fun. We're making jokes. Nothing's personal. Hopefully, we didn't make any, any insults to any of your work. But by all means, um, I, I speak for myself, but I'm guessing Bob and. Rick and Cliffy will agree with me that it's having your work looked at over and over again by many different people and people who have done it for a while can point out little things. I mean, even just in our conversation, there was stuff that Bob pointed out I didn't see, Rick pointed out that he didn't see, and so on. And I think that's what this is all about. So please contact us if you have more questions. We're happy to help. Um, Rick and I offer a critiquing service on the the uh, uh, imagecritiqueshow.com. Um when you go, please register. There's a quick little uh, put your email address in there so we can get you some specials coming up and stuff like that, so you can be part of the part of the family. And we do appreciate you spending your time with us tonight. And as you know, I'll put this uh, recording on the website so you can watch this again and the other all the other uh, hundreds and hundreds of other videos we've done. All right, the other five, four. <laughs> <laughs> um. Questions working anybody? our way, working our way to double digits. Yeah. 
Denise um, says thank you. That's cool. Thank you, Denise, for tuning in. Deb says thank you. And also, Nobody please. Sent any arrows our way yet? <clears throat> what was that, Bob? Nobody sent any arrows our way. No. <laughs> well, you might get them in the mail tomorrow. With a... Oh. Okay. Listen for and ticking. If if, when you open if, your mailbox, listen for something ticking real quick. Okay. If you're so inclined, please um, put your comments in on our site. Uh, you know, we'd love to share them with others, and however we can work to improve what we're doing here, uh, happy to do it. Yeah, good call, Ricky. We'd love to have some feedback from you that we can use. Um, hopefully, it's you know no four letter words. Um, I mean, you can use pork and and things like that, but um, yeah, we'd love to have some great comments from you that we can share with the rest of the world so they can really believe that we're doing something good here. Yeah. Bob, hey, you know, last words? <laughs> Bob, you're in it 46 years. Jeffy, about that same time and vote together. Uh, man, how I wish we could have had this sort of thing in a different format, obviously, because of the technology. When we were starting, uh, it was just... Uh, you know, there were a few people that would give us a hand and help us out. But by and large, we were kind of blazing a trail. And well, uh, But didn't you guys, I mean, I know that, that was with us. I mean, we joined our Indian head, which was a subcategory of Wisconsin, and then Wisconsin, and then PP of A. And you went to all these monthly meetings where we had print competitions. And after every print competition there, the judges would critique the images yeah. as well. And so let's we don't have that anymore. That's the uh, right. problem. So that's why this is such a great tool for uh, people working their way into this. I think a lot of folks too are so used to just doing an image and then they're done with it or, or they enter in competition, whatever. But I mean, I know we grew up with, I mean, especially Rick and I having dads in the business we got critiques whether we wanted them or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were always designed to be helpful. Of course, the one time my dad looked at the image, he goes, really? <laughs> okay, well, I, I, remember, I remember dad looking at one of my images, you know, it, it, it was a, a, a commercial image just for sale. Okay, go back in the dark and reprint it. And you do reprint it correctly, you can eat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Well, I used to tease my dad about back in the day when he first started doing images that they would keep score with an abacus. He didn't like that too much. So, <laughs> but hey, what about the time we went to Wyoming and the print machine quit and we were using post it notes? Oh, yeah. We had right. our score in a post it note and hold it up, and then somebody's right. over the calculator typing it up real quick. It could take oh, yeah. 10 minutes to get a score, but what a blast. Well, uh, and I got to say, you know, this is our fifth edition of this, and I can't uh, tell you, Bob, Zay, how much I appreciate your willingness to come on. Uh, you know, we've actually shared rooms together on, in judgings, um, wow. and I hope that our members and those that are part of this uh, uh, program and participate, I hope they appreciate the value and the experience of our guests. My goodness, you know, Bob's been down the road, up and down, and uh, uh, I've enjoyed judging with him, uh, pro sharing programs with him, and and enjoying his work. And you know, Bob is one of the the last few that we had in the few months previous. That man, the the experience that they've had. Um, and what they've shared with the with our our uh, association, our photographers. So I I really hope that you know our members aren't taking it lightly because we are going into a vault of a lot of knowledge uh, with the guests that we have here. And uh, I'm going on and on, but I I just so respect it and admire Bob and all the others that are helping us out, Cliffy, and you too, especially, man. Good job. Well, thanks, Rick. Uh, you know, I just hope that the, these people that are getting involved get involved. You got to yeah. get involved in your associations. I mean, the camaraderie. I mean, I went down, hit my head, and was paralyzed for a day and out for a few weeks with neck surgery. And because of my 
association with the associations. I had people coming in to help me do jobs. I mean, if you're out there uh, on an island all by yourself, you don't have that. Right. It is so important. Going to convention, you know, all the programs are great and all this and that. But the camaraderie and uh, visiting with uh, comrades is probably the most important part of it. You don't get that when you just sit at home and, and try and learn yeah. online, which it's important too, but it's not the same. You're right. No, it's not. John just made a beautiful comment for you, Bob. He really loved your work on the page. So thanks. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, guys, thanks again for tuning in. Thank you for watching the Image Critique Show with Jeff Johnson and Rick Avalos. Learn more by checking them out at theimagecriticshow.com.